I grew up in Albany, New York, actually a suburb of Albany, Niskiuna, New York. My parents are both social workers. My mom told me a story. She says, you know, I chose a job for the love, being a social worker, and we didn't make a ton of money, so you should choose a job where you make a lot of money. And I one day told my mom, well, I want to be an artist. She says, oh God, you chose the only job that pays less than a social worker. And she said, I want you to promise me that if you go to art school that you'll promise you'll one day get a job and if you get a job that that job has health insurance and that was a really really big deal I said yeah I promise I'll do that and I got to RISD art school and everyone was like creating their own projects and I had a teacher who said you're a designer everything around you is designed by other designers you can design the world you live in I met Joe my co-founder and both of us had this dream that we were gonna do something that would make an impact in the world we didn't even know what that meant I got this job at an industrial design firm in Los Angeles that had health insurance. My life felt a little bit like I was in a car, and the road in front, it's like you look out of a car, and the road in front of you looks exactly like the road behind you. And you're like, that's your life. And something about that really terrified me. Joe had been calling me up to try to get me to start a company, and then one day I go into work and I quit my job. I'm living in a house in Los Angeles with three friends. And I tell them I'm leaving Los Angeles. And I pack everything in the back of an old Honda Civic, a foam mattress, a thousand dollars in the bank account, hardly any savings or any money. I have to pursue the dreams. I'd rather fail doing something I love than always wonder what could have been. And so that one weekend, it's October 2007, I drive to San Francisco, and that was the beginning of Airbnb. I get to San Francisco. I had a rent check of $1,150, and I have $1,000 in the bank, and I can't pay rent, let alone live in San Francisco. It was very expensive. And Joe had the same problem. The first weekend we were there, this international design conference is coming to San Francisco, and all the hotels they're recommending are sold out. We said, well, what if we could just turn our house into a bed and breakfast for the design conference? I mean, people need housing. We certainly need money. We didn't have any beds. I just moved up there. And Joe said, don't worry. I have three air mattresses. And we called it not the bed and breakfast, but the air bed and breakfast. We built this website, and we ended up having three people stay with us. We made enough money to make our rent, but we also made some deep friends. And that was the very beginning of something that we saw. Many people told me it was the worst idea they've ever heard of. It was months and months and months of people trying to talk us out of our idea. And so we had to continue to think, like look at the mountaintop and not worry and not look down. We tried to raise $150,000 and sell 10% of the company. That would have been an amazing deal. And we got introduced to more than a dozen investors. Most of the investors we got introduced to didn't even return a phone calls or emails. A few of them wrote back and say, this is not something we're interested in. And the very few that met us did not give us money. We're air bed and breakfast. The air beds aren't working, maybe the breakfast will work. <laughs> so we decided let's sell collectible breakfast cereal. Obama O's, the breakfast of change. And then we also came up with a John McCain themed cereal. We ended up making a thousand boxes of cereal we sold them for $40 a box, and we made almost $30,000. And this is how we funded the company. Before that, we were funding the company on credit cards. I don't know if you know those, if you know those binders you put baseball cards in, kids with baseball cards, we put credit cards in those. We had sleeves of credit cards. I would go to sleep, and I'd wake up kind of like, <gasps> and my heart would be pounding. And I'd be like, oh my god, like, how did I get myself in this situation? I have no money. Like we launched a year ago, we still have no customers, and people don't like the idea, and what are we gonna do? Like now what? I kept saying now what, and like when is this gonna happen? And then you get the courage over the course of the day, and you'd find a new plan, and you get through the day, and you go to sleep confident. You're like, you know what? It's gonna be fine, and tomorrow's a new day. And you go to sleep, and you wake up, and you're like, oh my God, and then your heart starts pounding again. We had launched three times, we launched, no one used it, we launched, we launched again. And a year later, we have almost no customers, tons of credit card debt, and every investor we knew said no. Many people have asked me, why? Well, why didn't you lose hope at that point? And I guess I just believed in the idea. And we believed that if people could experience what we'd experienced, then this would be an idea that would spread. And they just needed to experience it. It would just take more time. I used to read these biographies and learn about these amazing people and I always wondered like, I wonder you know, who these dreams happened to. And the truth is they happened to everybody. Not everybody, but anybody. I must be living proof that anyone can achieve the American dream because I, 
I didn't come from nothing, I just came from such an average place. Our mission is to create a world where one day people could go to any country, to any town, to any village, and the entire community, almost everyone in that community, will open their homes and welcome you as if you're family. We are not there yet. When that day happens, I'll come back and I'll tell you I've made it.